Yeah, you read the title right. We're still at war with the cichlids with the plants. Plant Wars, part seven. All right, so we're gonna dive back into the Amazonian Islands tank and we're gonna show you what worked and what didn't work from the last group of plants. And uh, oh yeah, what's this express package from aquariumplants.com? Looks like uh, new plants to try out of there. I made a lot of changes, uh, changed the water flow, changed things around, got some new plants obviously. Time to drain it down, get in there and uh, see if we can finally win this war against the cichlids. I swear, this is it. Part seven, It'll, it's a, the seventh time is a charm. I'm gonna figure it out this time. I'm gonna beat these cichlids. We're gonna get plants in here. Yeah, stay tuned for part eight, right? <laughs> All right, let's go. So as we always do on Amazonian islands, when we do any sort of aquascaping, we gotta bring the water level down with the old sump pump because it is too deep, too huge of a tank for me to get in there and get all the way to the bottom easily. So uh, from the last time we put plants in, we put uh, the corkscrew valve and the jungle valve. So as you can see, most of the jungle valve is still there and doing good. You can see it's, it's all let, laying over now because I brought the water level down, but it's very substantial, doing good. Uh, we've had a piece break off. Uh, one piece did get beaten down by the fish and uh, I did move it over to the a Asian Jungle Aquarium and it's uh, growing back with a force, so uh, no harm, no foul there. Um, but uh, you did notice the corkscrew valve is gone. <laughs> These guys destroyed it. Uh, so they went after that pretty, they didn't go after that first week, it was funny. It went, I don't know what it was, it was actually more than a week, like 10 days. and. Uh, I thought for sure, okay, it's not a problem. And then boom, they just one day, they just nailed it. Next morning, all of it gone overnight. So uh, who knows, did I skip, miss a feeding or something? I don't know, but it's cichlids, right? That's why we've been battling these guys for as long as we have. <laughs> they don't make it easy to have a planted uh, aquarium. So uh, we have some new plants. Uh, let me go ahead and show you what we got. So there's two sets of plants here. As you can see, uh, there is the Perry's Baby Red Hardy Water Lily and the Taro Violet Stemmed. So the Taro here is actually for the scape for the uh, 315 gallon step-by-step -step DIY build that's happening right now. Uh, and that's a bog plant. So that kind of gives you an idea of sort of what that scape might be like. But over here, these lilies are what are gonna be going into the Amazonian Islands. So what I've done is I've taken the power head down from the top from surface agitation and I brought it down to the side and I'm making the water flow go around in a big huge oval and I've changed the returns up there to where they're coming up and shooting down again to try to limit some of that top water flow because lily pads do not want you know extensive surface agitation up there and since I get my oxygenation down here in the sump, that's not going to be a problem. Plus, there's still surface agitation. I'm just directing it to the sides, to the front, and to the back. And uh, I'm going to put these lily pads sort of in the middle area. They're going to grow up, and they should have a relatively stable area. Uh, it should give diffused lighting, and I don't think any of these guys will bother it. And I love the way it looks. I actually had it set up that way in the 3000 gallon for a while until those bees just got way too big and destroyed it uh, and i wanted to change the water flow in that tank as well so i had to uh change that so that is the plan to add more plants in here that's going to give us those nice uh thick vines coming up for these guys to swim through uh i've enjoyed having the the wood sticking up they've knocked one piece out this is one of those things where this was shoved way under there, I mean way under there, like as hard as I can push it, and somehow they get it out. That's uh, always boggles my mind how that happens, but uh, you know, they're, they're stronger than we, uh, we give them credit for apparently, because they, they, can, they can move rocks, they can move big sticks that are wedged in there, they can do quite a bit. So uh, again, the, uh, the, dwarf, uh, the uh, jungle valve, that seems to be good. The ones that have been in there now for quite a while, they're there, they've been growing. Uh, like I said, they're they're quite long, and it's just that uh, they're all bent over right now because of the uh, water being down. But actually, even when the water is all the way up, uh, they still bend over. That's how fast they grow. Uh, I don't want to spoil it, but the you'll see the next update on the uh, Asian jungle. It's a jungle now. It's a jungle in a big way. <laughs> so it is pretty crazy. 
Yeah, you can kind of see there that jungle valve goes up over top of that all the way across. Same with this one. It's coming here, going up all the way back. So very crazy. But I think uh, that water level's looking probably low enough. So I'm going to get in there and resituate that that stick. And uh, let me found another one I'm going to put in there. So we'll get that and we'll get these lily pads in here and get it filled back up. Just looking up here from the side of the tank, figuring out where to put the water lilies. Should they be... I've kind of got the jungle valve lined up sort of in the middle here and they do come up and, and go over the top. Should I try to go maybe, hmm, maybe far right with a lily sort of in the middle and then, I don't know. There's so much space front to back and you know, we got the five feet this way. I want to space it out. Should probably offset the lilies. Hmm. I don't know if I should put one up front. Yeah, I don't know, maybe... And we gotta wanna stay away from that. Yeah, I don't know, maybe back over here and then on the other side over there. Yeah, let's go for that. Well, as you can imagine, I use uh, two hoses to fill this piece back up because it takes forever. But uh, we do have uh, the wood positioned in there. We got a piece over here and then we have uh, one lily here it's kind of more to the front and then one over there more to the back there and moved a lot of sand around and rocks to hopefully protect them they have a big root ball so hopefully they're not easy to dislodge but uh you know plant wars part seven we don't put anything past these guys because we know what they can do so uh let's get this filled back up and then we'll we'll take a peek just sort of checking out the tank from the top as it's filling up and i did notice that we still do have all of those Anubius plants on top of the wood arch back there. And I'm seeing uh, new leaves coming in on some of those. So, and we do have java fern back there as well. So we do have high, we do have hopes that eventually, once I get the fertilization right in here, that we do get a nice big vegetated, uh, uh, basically arch back there, the top of it just full of plants. And another thing I want to mention is that I am going to be raising these lights all the way up and cutting some slits in the tops uh, so that we can have uh, top level plants. So giving it the same kind of treatment uh, like we've done with the 125 gallon uh, Malawi River Aquarium and uh, what's actually happening to other aquariums as well. So uh, between the uh, lily pads growing up and the jungle valve canoping over, we should have pretty good uh, vegetated canopy as well as all the, the big vines coming up and then hopefully get the fertilization right and we can get all those Anubias and Java fern back there growing up and get the whole top of that arch, that wood arch, covered in plants. And then uh, also get the top plants with the roots coming down. I think the best example of that is the, the 125 gallon Malawi River. So uh, hopefully even with cichlids in here, we will get able to have quite a bit of uh, live vegetation throughout the aquarium, both, you know, growing up and growing down. So, and top water coverage with uh, lily pad leaves and uh, jungle valve. So we're gonna get this thing situated yet. Uh, <laughs> if I'm willing to go seven part war with these guys, I'm willing to go as long as it takes to get this tank looking right because it's a beautiful 750 gallon aquarium and I really wanna dial it in and get it just right. All right, we are filled back up. Uh, obviously a lot of the sediment still sort of moving around, but I wanted to take a little video of it now so you sort of see the water flow. You can see how up in the middle there where I hope those uh, lily pads will grow up to, it's fairly calm. And then you can see, hopefully you can see the video, that you've got a pretty solid water flow, circular motion at this, at this ground level, real low in the tank here. Pretty solid amount of water flow going through there, keeping everything moving. So uh, I've been running it this way for a little while and I'm definitely liking it. Uh, it keeps, uh, keeps that substrate aerated and um, allows me to do something like the lily pads up there so we're going to see obviously we know how this works uh i try different things uh, i have high hopes for the first week it goes swimmingly and then uh the cichlids strike back <laughs> so uh we'll see how this goes uh the, certainly the the roots for the uh the root ball i should say for the lily pads is huge so it's uh i mean it's like the size of a like a rock there so Hopefully it's not a situation where they get uproot them or anything like that. And then, uh, of course, hopefully they don't munch on them either. But we shall see. Uh, really, the only thing I can do is is 
try reasonable things that, or try things that have a reasonable chance of uh, success, you know. Um, so let's see. Uh, one thing I remembered when I was looking at this as I was filling it up is that uh, I never got the, the extra schooling fish. So I'm um, going to be looking to put a fish order pretty soon for some fish for the 220 flooded forest. So uh, I'm going to try to get some fish for this, these guys, for this aquarium as well. Uh, I want to have some smaller schoolers, uh, possibly somebody to utilize this upper space here. Um, so we'll see. Uh, we've already talked about it before, a lot of good ideas. I got the list written down. So we'll see what the stores have. But I uh, want to get that done for this aquarium. And then I'll figure out uh, elevating the lights a little bit and getting some uh, some top plants, some uh, emerg emerging growing plants up there with some roots hanging down. Uh, probably just in the very back. I think that's uh, where I'm going to do it since we're going to have the lily pads up here in the middle pretty soon. And as you can see, uh, this this uh, jungle bow, it, you know, goes up and over really quick. Um, you got one back there that's it's already tied itself into the into the wood uh, back there and going up. So uh, so this is the tank after a 400 gallon water change. We have the new plants in, and uh, <laughs> now we will uh, follow up. And uh, also too, the the what are supposed to be albino hecali, but might be albino redhead tapahos. They've grown, but I still cannot tell uh, what they are for sure. They're still not big enough. So uh, unfortunately that question is not answered yet, but uh, they are growing quickly. So hopefully maybe in a month's time, we'll be able to figure out for sure. Uh, it's one of those things where I, I ordered albino hecali, uh, but if I got red, albino redhead tapahos, it's still a win-win. They're both great fish and uh, I paid for the cheaper one if that's the case, but uh, and, and if it does turn out to be albino redhead top host, I will get uh, albino hecali as well. Uh, I do want to have them, so or albino hecali cara, whatever. Uh, I do want to have those fish as well in here. So we'll get those schoolers. Uh, I want to get a punch of another color in here, and then uh, we'll get some top water, hopefully some top water fish going, and uh, keep working on the fertilization to get that back. Uh, wood arch because I think that thing gets covered heavily in uh, Anubias and Java fern that'll look sweet and then uh, we'll get those pothos roots coming down all the way in the back across the back Yeah, we'll we'll modify the, the tops in the back up there So we so we can uh, like I said raise up the lights all the way and we'll get something suspended back there to hold the uh, Pothos to let it let it grow down and hang down in the water and create that uh, That backdrop of roots in the very back of the aquarium. So it's eventually going to be dialed in. It's a 750 gallon tank. It, it takes a while to get these guys going. And there's always the challenge of uh, doing all live plants with big cichlids. So uh, it takes work, but in my opinion, it is worth the effort in the end. Once we get this thing fully dialed in, it's going to look amazing. Okay, it's the next day and the tank's all cleared up. The lily pads are still doing good, but let's go ahead and get the uh, modifications done up top. And uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise up the lights like I was speaking about. And then in the back there, we're gonna cut some slits and those back lids so we can go ahead and add the pothos to this aquarium and get the root structure coming down to the aquarium. So I've already gone ahead and cut four more legs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the little risers, we're gonna add the big risers and we're gonna get the lights all the way up here and that's gonna give us room for Top, uh, top aquarium emergent growth plants uh, to be settled in. So we're gonna start with the poso first. So what I've done is I've measured there in the back and it looks like we're gonna come about eight inches off the back of the tank. And then, and then what we'll do is we'll cut slits in the lids back there so the pothos roots can get down in there, but they can basically sit on top uh, and have structure up here to grow onto, which we know they're pretty good at. Pretty soon they'll be growing up the wall and who knows where. All right, let's go. All right, so the top's been cut, uh, the pothos has been added, the roots are through the slits there, all the way across, and of course the uh, lights are nice and elevated, and oh my gosh, let me show you, it makes a huge difference in the tank. So again, one of those things where I don't know if it comes up on camera, it comes out on camera, but in person the light distribution is so much nicer with the, uh, the lights uh, leveled up or raised up there. And of course you can see the uh, pothos roots in the back, so it shouldn't be too long before we have uh, quite an arrangement of roots back there. And one interesting thing is, for, for a test, I put this pothos near the hole, but I didn't put any of it in the hole like the other two. I'm curious to see if it can find it on its own. I suspect it can, but uh, just a fun little thing. 
And it's only been uh, one day, and if you look there at the uh, lily pad, you can see it's already shot up a leaf. Close, probably halfway up the aquarium, so same with the other side there. So you can tell that they, are, uh, they know they're in a good spot and they are reaching for the surface, so that's pretty exciting. I mean, if they continue at that rate, I think another day or two it should reach the surface, but we'll see, something interesting to follow up on. Uh, but yeah, so this is a, a lot of improvements here. So we've got the corkscrew valve didn't work, jungle valve's working, hopefully these lily pads work. And uh, now that we have the uh, lighting adjusted, uh, everything about it just looks better to me. And uh, I am looking forward to a ton of roots in the back there uh, hanging down. I think that'll make a, a very nice backdrop uh, for the 750 Amazonian Islands. So the plant wars with the cichlids uh, continues, but we are making progress. Uh, we've gone from them destroying anything I put in the sand to having jungle val last quite a period of time and uh, introducing uh, lily pads, which I have a sneaking suspicion should do pretty well in here. I'm very hopeful for. And of course, we've now added uh, top level emergent growth plants. Uh, we got the pothos on there. And I have a few other uh, bog plants I'm working on cultivating. So uh, who knows, we might add some of them as well in there too, which will help balance out the tank. And it also looks good. As well as uh, increase, uh, rising up the lights, uh, the distribution is way better. We had way too much par in here, uh, even with uh, the lights reduced down. So hopefully that and getting those the uh, dry ferns going is going to get that uh, all those uh, Anubias and Java fern on top of the arch in the back going. Because if that really filled in, that would look like something. If you had the lily pads up there and that filling in and the roots hanging out of the back, I think this would definitely have a, a very cool Amazonian look to it. And uh, as far as uh, what's upcoming, uh, I'm working on a project calling uh, Crater Made Underwater, so you can kind of imagine what that might be, but uh, that's kind of a slow roll, a lot of footage I have to take to sort through to get uh, just the right parts to make that interesting. And of course, the uh, part four, the final part of the step-by-step -step build where the tank will be complete and we'll be filling it up with water and all that good stuff. And then following that will be where we trim out the outside and set up the tank, scape it, and add the fish. So uh, and again, that'll be a premiere uh, in the future when that's ready. So lots going on, lots to look forward to. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon.